Um, all right, so let's get it straight. We're 62 hours away from shutting down the government of the United States of America, and Republicans are launching an impeachment drive based on a long debunked and discredited lie. No foreign enemy has ever been able to shut down the government of the United States, but now mega Republicans are about to do just that. But they don't want to cut off public services to the people and deny paychecks to more than a million service members without first launching an impeachment drive, even when they don't have a shred of evidence against President Biden for an impeachable offense. And you think I'm being harsh? Here's what some Republicans have had to say over the last week about the actions of the Republicans as they watch up close, quote, the dysfunction caucus at work, in the words of our GOP colleague from Nebraska, Don Bacon, clown show, foolishness, terribly misguided, stupidity, failure to lead, lunatics, disgraceful, new low, pathetic, enabling Chairman Xi, people that have serious issues, those folks don't have a plan, show just how broken they are, and individuals that just want to burn the whole place down. Now, if I said any of these things, they'd probably take my words down, but these are Republicans talking about Republicans. So let's be clear, this isn't partisan warfare America's seeing today, it is chaotic infighting between Republicans and Republicans. It's MAGA versus extreme MAGA, as if anybody in the real world could tell the difference between the two. What a staggering failure of leadership. Speaker McCarthy's invertebrate appeasement of the most fanatical elements of his conference now threatens the well-being of every American. Now, some people <clears throat> think the members of the GOP caucus aren't interested in anything logical. They just want to see the world burn, as Alfred Pennyworth put it in the dark night. But I see a method in the madness. A week ago, Donald Trump posted a comment saying that a government shutdown, quote, is the last chance to defund these political prosecutions against me and other patriots. You get it? To delay justice, Donald Trump would cut off paychecks to a couple million service members and federal workers and furlough more than a million workers and pay them later for having not worked. They would halt food assistance to millions of moms and kids and keep NIH in my district from enrolling any more patients in life and death clinical research trials. Trump's convinced that if we shut the government down, his four criminal prosecutions on 91 different felony and misdemeanor charges will be defunded and delayed long enough to keep him from having to go before a jury of his peers before the 2024 election. And like flying monkeys on a mission for the Wicked Witch of the West, Trump's followers in the House now carry his messages out to the world, shut down the government, shut down the prosecutions. But the cult master has another command for his followers, which brings us here today. On August 27th, he posted this edict, either impeach the bum or fade into oblivion. They did it to us. Of course, the standard for impeachment is not whether they did it to us, but whether the president committed treason or bribery or other high crimes and misdemeanors. But the Constitution's irrelevant to them. What counts is what Donald Trump wants. As Republican Representative Ken Buck, a Freedom Caucus member, told CNN the other day, President Trump has gone on his social media account and said we should be impeaching President Biden. Kevin McCarthy said we have an impeachment inquiry. You draw the conclusion, directly or indirectly, this impeachment inquiry was a result of President Trump's pressure. So we move from a Trump-ordered government shutdown to a Trump-ordered impeachment process, and yet back in the reality-based world, the majority sits completely empty-handed with no evidence of any presidential wrongdoing, no smoking gun, no gun, no smoke. In fact, we have had to slide awkwardly into a House impeachment process without the benefit of the floor vote that Speaker McCarthy insisted was absolutely imperative and necessary when Donald Trump was impeached. In fact, they went to the Department of Justice and they got an OLC opinion saying, quote, no committee may undertake the momentous move from legislative oversight to impeachment without the delegation by the full House of such authority. OLC opinion, January 19th, 2020. And that's why 
the House voted in the case of Donald Trump, but that's exactly what has not happened here because they don't have the votes because dozens of Republicans recognize what a futile and absurd process this is. Now, the title of the hearing is The Basis for an Impeachment Inquiry of President Joseph Biden. <clears throat> and yet, they present us no basis at all today, even after eight months of investigation. They've invited three witnesses to testify. Not one of them is an eyewitness to a presidential crime of any kind. Not one of them is a direct fact witness about any of the events related to Ukraine and Burisma. Not one of them has participated in the eight months of investigation in which our distinguished chairman has publicly boasted that he received 100% of everything he asked for. And I quote, every subpoena that I've signed as chairman of the House Oversight Committee over the last five months, we've gotten 100% of what we've requested, whether it's with the FBI, with the banks, or with Treasury. That means we are the real witnesses here. In fact, <clears throat> The committee has received 12,000 pages of bank records. Here they are, right in front of us, printed double-sided. And not a single page shows a dime going to President Joe Biden. We've received 2,000 pages of SARS reports the chairman subpoenaed. We've held hearings and conducted interviews with everybody from Hunter Biden's business partners to a federal agent assigned to that investigation, and still we found no evidence of wrongdoing by President Biden. If the Republicans had a smoking gun or even a dripping water pistol, they would be presenting it today, but they've got nothing on Joe Biden. All they can do is return to the thoroughly demolished lie that Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump launched five years ago the Burisma conspiracy theory, a fairy tale so preposterous that one of its main authors, Lev Parnas, has now disowned and repudiated it. This is the theory that Vice President Biden, global anti-corruption groups, and most Western govern governments targeted Ukraine Prosecutor General Shokin for removal because he was threatening the Burisma Corporation whose board Hunter Biden served on. Trump synthesized the lie in his August 27th post about President Biden saying, look, the guy got bribed, he paid people off, and he wouldn't give $1 billion to Ukraine unless they, quote, got rid of the prosecutor. Trump's story is the opposite of the truth. When Biden was VP, he worked as a key player in the Obama administration and global community's efforts to combat corruption in Ukraine. In late 2015, as part of a coordinated global effort Biden called for the removal of Viktor Shokin, a corrupt Ukrainian prosecutor general who did nothing about corruption in Ukraine other than to participate in it, rather than assist British authorities who were actually investigating Burisma and its owner. Shokin consistently frustrated their efforts. The leadership provided by Biden was part of a broad bipartisan campaign to oppose corruption in Ukraine. In early 2016, Republican senators, Ron Johnson, Rob Portman, and Mark Kirk, wrote to the Ukrainian president assailing corruption in his country and urging him, quote, to press ahead with urgent reforms to the prosecutor general's office. Yet years later, in 2018, as President Trump saw Biden as a strong rival in the 2020 election, he worked with Giuliani to twist all the facts around and to suddenly accuse Biden of corruption in calling for the dismissal of a corrupt prosecutor. A few months ago, Chairman Comer and the committee received an insider's account of the plan to concoct and spread this lie from an extraordinary letter sent to us by Lev Parnas, who was Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man. Giuliani and Parnas searched high and low to find anyone who would endorse their contortions about Biden. Their failing crusade culminated in the infamous phone call that then President Trump made to Ukrainian President Zelensky, in which Trump threatened to withhold hundreds of millions of dollars in economic, strategic, and military security assistance to Ukraine unless Zelensky embraced their ridiculous fabrication and falsely advertised to the world that Ukraine was investigating Joe Biden. This shakedown became the basis for the first House impeachment of President Trump. Giuliani's 
big lie has been thoroughly debunked by multiple sources. As Congressman Buck, a former chief of the criminal division of the U.S. Attorney's Office in Colorado and a member of the House Freedom Caucus said, and I quote, there is in fact no evidence that Shokin was engaged in an investiga investigation of Burisma or that Joe Biden's role in his firing was in any way connected to Burisma. He continued, what's missing despite years of investigation is the smoking gun that connects Joe Biden to his never-do-well son's corruption. It's scandalous to use impeachment to establish a counterfeit moral equivalence between President Biden, an honorable public servant who has never been indicted or convicted of anything in his career of more than 50 years in public life, and Donald Trump, a twice impeached president who's recently been found in court to have sexually abused and defamed a woman and fraudulently inflated the value of his real estate properties while facing 91 criminal charges in four separate indictments on everything from conspiring to overthrow an election and defraud the American people to making criminal hush money payoffs to stealing classified government documents and hiding them while obstructing justice. Impeachment is the people's final weapon of constitutional self-defense against a president who behaves like a king and violates the public trust by committing treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors equivalent to them. It is reserved for extraordinary public offenses like inciting a violent insurrection against the American government and trying to overthrow our presidential election. That offense in 2021, whose related crimes have resulted in hundreds of criminal convictions and hundreds more being prosecuted, led to Donald Trump's second impeachment in the House on a massive bipartisan vote of 232 to 197 and a similarly lopsided bipartisan vote of 57 to 43 in the Senate. I wonder how many of my esteemed Republican colleagues here who all voted against impeaching Donald Trump if they were in the House at that point can reconcile their votes against impeaching Trump for the grave crime of inciting a violent insurrection against the government with their calls supporting impeachment of Joe Biden for allegedly committing a high crime and misdemeanor that has not even been defined yet, much less proven. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> um, if this dysfunction caucus is going to insist on going forward, we must receive the testimony of Rudy Giuliani and Lev Parnas, the insiders who know the origins of the lie upon which this sham impeachment is based and who work to spread it. We know that Mr. Parnas is ready and willing to testify, and as a former U.S. attorney and mayor, Mr. Giuliani will surely agree to enlighten us on everything. Pursuant to Clause 2K6 of Rule 11, I move that the committee subpoena Rudy Giuliani and Lev Parnas to come and testify in these hearings. And I would like to ask for a vote on that or debate, as you would please, Mr. Chairman.